We've already discussed how you can override methods in Java, but Java also allows you to overload methods. To overload a method is to create multiple versions of it within a single class. While this sounds very similar both in name and concept to overriding, it's really very different. When we overload a method, what we're really doing is just creating a totally separate method that happens to share a name. Here, for example, in a class named Sean, we have four different methods, all called foo. For this to be allowed, each foo has to have a unique set of parameters. That is, the number, types, and order of the parameters has to be unique. This uniqueness is important because that's how the compiler determines which overload of foo is being invoked. So here, when we invoke foo with a lamp object as the first argument and a mammal object as the second argument, it's this last overload of foo which gets invoked because it's the foo with a lamp for its first parameter and a mammal for its second. Then here, when we invoke foo with an int argument 35, this invokes the overload of foo with a single int parameter. So the key idea here is that at compile time, the compiler looks at the compile time type of the arguments and matches the call to the overload with the appropriate parameters. So if we were to create a fifth overload of foo, which also takes a single int parameter, this would create a conflict. Now when we invoke foo with an int argument, the compiler is left with an ambiguity. It doesn't know which of the two overloads is meant to be invoked here. So the compiler is going to object if you have any two methods with both the same name and the same list of parameters. Notice though that the compiler doesn't care about the names of the parameters. Only their types, their number, and their order is what matters. Also notice the compiler doesn't care what the return types are. So any of your overloads can return any type you want. Now you may be wondering, what's the point of overloading? You may recall from our discussion on languages the notion of polymorphism. Overriding in Java is a mechanism for runtime polymorphism. Overloading, in contrast, is a mechanism for compile time polymorphism. With overloading, we have a single name for an operation for a method which effectively changes its behavior based on the number and the types of the arguments. But because the selection of which overload is made always at compile time, in truth, overloading really doesn't do much for us, because instead of creating multiple methods of the same name, we could just create totally separate methods and just give them different names. So if we were really unimaginative in coming up with the names for our methods, we could have foo, foo1, foo2, foo3, and foo4. That would work perfectly fine, and you'd get the same end result. So in truth, Java allows us to overload methods merely for the sake of style. It's quite common in a class that you want multiple methods that do basically the same thing, but they take different arguments. So rather than having to give them arbitrarily different names, it's nice if we can just give them all the same name. In the end, that's all method overloading is really for. Perhaps the trickiest aspect of overloading stems from the fact that in Java, the arguments to a method don't necessarily have to exactly match in type. So here, for example, say we have an overload of foo which takes a lamp argument and then a mammal argument, and another overload of foo which takes a lamp argument and then an animal argument. The question then arises, if we invoke foo with first a lamp argument and then a hamster, which of those two overloads is being invoked? Both seem like possibilities because a hamster is both a valid animal and a valid mammal, so it actually matches both of these. Well, as you might expect, the compiler will choose the closest match. And so assuming mammal is a closer ancestor to hamster than animal is, presumably the hierarchy goes from animal down to mammal down to hamster, well then this call to foo is going to invoke the overload with mammal. This is actually a rather simple example. There are several other rules for how the compiler determines which overload is the closest match. I don't recommend you actually try to learn these rules. They really are quite involved and convoluted. In practice, if you're ever uncertain which overload is being invoked, you could just ask your IDE. Like, say, in the NetBeans IDE, if you hover your mouse over a method invocation, NetBeans will tell you exactly which overload the call invokes. Also keep in mind that you can explicitly specify an overload by using casts. So here, for example, if we cast the hamster argument to animal, then the overload being invoked is going to be the one with an animal parameter.
So we actually should amend our method invocation rules one more time. The first thing that happens is that at compile time, the compiler checks for the compile time type of the object expression, and then it picks the proper overload based on the number, order, and compile time types of the arguments. One more somewhat confusing aspect of overloads is that a class can overload a method which it inherits. So here, if the class Donald inherits from Jill, and Jill defines a method foo with no arguments, well, if Donald defines its own method foo, but with an int parameter, that's not an override, that's an overload. So effectively, in Jill, you just have the single method foo, but then in Donald, you have the two overloads. You have the foo inherited from Jill with no parameters, and you have the foo with a single int parameter. If we also, in Donald, define a function foo with no parameters, then that is the override. And keep in mind, the override has to match entirely. Overloads can have different return types, but an override has to have not only the same parameter list, but also the same return type. So if in Donald we were to define a method foo with no arguments, but give it the return type char, then the compiler would reject this. If you change the return type, it's no longer a valid override, and the class Donald can't have both a method foo with no arguments that returns void, and a method foo with no arguments that returns char.